This is Sound Reason, where today's culture and timeless truths come together. It's reason, relevant content apologetics, worldview, and answers to the questions that you need to know. Now, the man who preached in 50 states in 50 days. Please welcome your host for Sound Reason, author and educator, Dr. Alex McFarland. Hi. This is Alex McFarland, and I welcome you back to another edition of the show, Sound Reason, on the show where we talk about Christianity and the evidence for belief in the Bible and Jesus Christ. And today on the program, I'm going to talk about several things that do not negate the truth of the gospel. Uh, we live in a world where different belief systems compete for the hearts and minds of people, and there are oftentimes questions about Christianity, which is which is good because we have answers to the questions, but oftentimes there are objections against Christianity. I just finished writing a book, a brand new book that came out entitled 10 Answers for Skeptics. And the subtitle really uh, will give you a clue as to where the content goes, Inside the Mind of the Skeptic. And during the course of writing this book, 10 Answers for Skeptics, I interviewed dozens of people across the country that were either atheists or agnostics. Many professed that they didn't believe in God. Some said they once believed in God, but no longer did. And in the book, I answer dozens of questions and objections and issues people have with the Christian faith. I ask a lot of the skeptics that I interviewed, I said, listen, I don't want to caricature your position. I don't want to misrepresent kind of where you're coming from. Tell me, you know, what's your beef with Christianity, with the Bible, or the church. Now, many of the answers that they gave me, you yourself may have heard. Like, well, uh, the Bible is some 2,000-year-old book. How can we trust a book that old? Does the Bible have errors in it? Uh, other people ask questions like this. How do we really know that Jesus rose from the grave? But oftentimes, people would say things like this. They would say, well, Alex, it's the 21st century. I mean, come on. I mean, we live in the, the, the age of internet and worldwide communication and we've explored space and we've split the atom. Do you mean to tell me people still believe in God and miracles and that Jesus walked on water and come on, one way of salvation? I mean, how could Jesus possibly be the only way? Uh, it's the 21st century after all. And then people would say this. They would say, well, Alex, you know, I've got my truth, you've got your truth, and we all make our own truth. Well, in this show today, I want to respond to some of these questions, some of these objections, and broadly speaking, I want to give you six things that don't disprove the gospel. But first, let me explain what the gospel is. The gospel is a Bible word. I'm sure you've heard that word. It means good news. Perhaps you, you knew that. Perhaps you've heard people explain that the gospel is the good news. But you might have heard the word used in kind of a negative sense. You know, oh, some, some gospel evangelist or something like that. The word gospel doesn't always uh, bring to mind positive imagery in the minds of some people, but it really is a good word, and it means good news. Uh, well, what's the good news? Well, the good news actually starts with uh, admission of some bad news. The bad news is humanity has sinned. The worst news is that sin separates us from God. It's almost like a patient going to a doctor and getting a diagnosis. And uh, the doctor says, well, the good news is a lot of your, your body is very healthy, but the bad news is you've got a tumor. And unless something is done about it, it could be fatal. And so right away, all of the, uh, the good things are sort of pushed aside uh, in light of this very bad, potentially terminal thing. Now, that's where the human race is. There's a lot of good we can say about the human race. We're talented. We can exhibit love. We have relationships that are very meaningful to us. The human race has created tall buildings and beautiful works of art. There's a lot of things we could say positively about humanity, and rightly so. But the bad news is, and the news that God tells us in love news that a lot of people really don't want to receive, the bad news is that we have sinned. Now, let me explain what sin is. Now, we know examples of sinful things, uh, robbing a bank or committing a murder. Those are bad. Telling a lie, that's bad. 
but sin is actually an assault on the character of God. Now, the character of God includes love and mercy and justice and compassion, righteousness, but also God's nature, God's essence, God's character is existence. God is eternal. God could not not exist. In fact, when God told Moses, I am that I am, he was essentially saying, it is my nature to exist. So one of the things that sin is that makes it such an affront against the character of God, sin is that which tends toward non-being. And one of the reasons that sin could not be allowed into heaven, and sin has got to be addressed, if you're going to be with God, is that our nature to sin, which works against love and truth and righteousness and being, has to be changed. And the gospel, the good news, the great news, is that Jesus Christ can change us and give us a new eternal nature. That's the gospel, and we're going to talk more about it when we come back after this break on Sound Reason. So stay tuned. God of love, God of love, why is there war and death, death are there struggling the Christians? What required? What were... For answers to all these questions and more, log on to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. There you will find original programming proving the Bible's legitimacy, exclusive documentaries on hot-button biblical issues, and much more material that can be taken anywhere with you through mobile apps. Don't put it off another day, and go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com now to take your faith to another level. Hi, welcome back. We're talking about several things that don't disprove or negate the truth of the gospel. And before the break, I was talking about what sin is. The good news, the gospel, that God loves you. Christ died for you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. And the good news is that God will forgive your sins. And God can heal the hurts, the pains, the wounds. Listen, God can forgive whatever we've done. God can heal whatever has been done to us. That really is good news. Now, whether we admit it or not, many of us, we would like a do-over in life. I mean, wouldn't it be good to get a, get a rewind and, and get to reboot and start again, a blank slate? That's what we have in Jesus Christ. For me, I was 21 years old. I was a college student when I experienced the love and the forgiveness and the new life that Jesus Christ offers. And truly, it is good news. It is gospel. Well, the gospel includes, as I said in the previous segment, some bad news, that we're sinners. And sin is an affront against God, disobedience. It's the idea of, of missing the mark. And no matter how good we, from a human vantage point, think someone might be, in reality, the Bible, the Word of God, says that all have sinned. We've all missed the mark. Now, from our perspective, we, we, we see some have missed it farther than others. We say, well, you know, I'm better than this person who's incarcerated in a prison or this, uh, you know, Muammar Gaddafi was recently assassinated and he's been a terrorist and been a very despotic leader. And we, we say, well, I'm not as bad as that. But the Bible says that we've all broken God's law. The Bible says that the Word and God's revelation concludes that all are under sin. So we're all in this predicament of needing forgiveness, restoration, new life that only Jesus Christ can give. We're sinners, and if we're honest with ourselves, we know that we've, we've known the right, but we've done the wrong. And it's an affront to God's nature because it is that which tends toward non-being. It's evil. It's death. The Word of God says in Romans 6.23, there's a book in the New Testament, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. In other words, the result, the, the, the payoff is death. Now, think of it this way. You work a job, at the end of the week, you get a paycheck. You get a, a wage. Well, you live a life, and at the end of your life, there's a payoff as well. There's a wage. The Bible says the wages of sin, unresolved, unaddressed, the result of sin is death separation from God. 
And how sad it would be if the story ended there. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, some people count this message as worthless. It's rubbish. It's just foolishness. But for some, this message of the gospel might be uh, irrelevant. For others, though, it's a, an eternal treasure. Let me give you a little illustration. Uh, in 1908, there was, in Detroit, Michigan, uh, a man starting a business, and he was looking for investors. And he went to one of his friends, who was an attorney, and the attorney's name was Horace Rackman. And uh, the, the man said, hey, I've got this business idea. I think it's going to be very successful. Would you please invest $5,000, and I will pay you back, and there'll be a great return. And Rackman didn't quite understand the, the business or the product, but he believed in his friend. And he didn't have the money. And uh, he went to the bank and he said, listen, I want to borrow some money uh, and I want to invest in my friend's business. And the banker said, well, what type of a business is it? He said, well, it's, it's uh, automobiles. It's vehicles powered by engines and people will ride them and drive in them. And the banker said, listen, Horace, you're going to thank me one day. I am not going to let you waste your money on an idea like that. Uh, if it were horses, because livestock and horses, that's the future of transportation, I would lend you the money, but I'm not going to let you lose your cash in something as, as outlandish as that. So Horace Rackman went to some other people and he got the money together and he didn't really understand this thing called automobiles and uh, building cars, but he trusted his friend and he gave him the money that he got together and scrounged up. And he was glad that he did because in just a very short number of years, Henry Ford paid Horace Rackman back and he recovered his investment and then some. He was paid back more than $12 million because he was one of the first investors in the Ford Motor Company. Now, that story sounds uh, amazing. And the point of it is this, that what was worthless to one man ended up being priceless to another man. And that's the gospel. Maybe you have thought that Christianity was not relevant. The Bible is just some old book of fables and Jesus is some uh, dim personality from the past. Let me say this, don't miss this good news which is priceless. It really is priceless. And when we come back, we're going to go over some of the common objections and how they really don't hold water and how indeed the gospel is true and indeed relevant. Stay tuned. Sound Reason is back after this. I am. I am ready. I am ready. I'm ready to see what the world has to offer. I am. I am ready to go. Go. Teach. To spread the gospel. I am ready to explore. I'm ready for a challenge. I am. I'm ready to make a difference. To be a difference maker. I am. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Becoming a Difference Maker. North Greenville University. I am Tawana Scott with North Greenville University's T. Walter Brazier Graduate School. We offer a master's degree in ministry, business, and education, as well as a doctor of ministry degree. We have a faculty of scholars who are also practitioners in their professional fields. Our quality and affordability make us the very best value in the region, whether you choose online or in the classroom. We are North Greenville University's Graduate School, where Christ-centered graduate education is our mission. Visit us online at alexmcfarland.com. Hi, Alex McFarland here. We're back on Sound Reason. And I did want to say that on my website, which is alexmcfarland.com, there are several pages with answers to questions that people often email me and we give responses. But also, much of what we're sharing, uh, it can be found in some of the books that I've written. And uh, the most recent one is entitled 10 Answers for Skeptics. But I want to go over some of the things that don't negate the truth of the gospel. And number one is this, that the gospel is still true regardless of the prestige of the one doing the criticizing. Now, every now and then, especially when I speak with young people, um, they'll say, but Alex, my professor who has a PhD says blank. Or someone might say, but my boss who is wealthy and has a million dollars 
says this or that. Let me say this, that Christianity has been believed by some of the best and the brightest minds in history. And uh, even though someone might have uh, a doctoral degree, and I've got nothing against education, in fact, I led a seminary in college for five years, but uh, a PhD does not give someone the authority to negate the existence of God and the truth of the gospel. Someone might have a, a PhD, a high position, a lot of fame, a lot of money, a lot of authority, but the gospel is still true, regardless of the prestige of the one uh, doing the criticizing. Um, the authority and the credentials of the critic says nothing about the truth or falsity of the gospel message. Secondly, the gospel is still true regardless of the numbers of voices raised in opposition. Periodically, when I'll speak at a campus or maybe be in a debate, someone will say, but Alex, nobody believes that Jesus is the only way anymore. Or someone will say, Alex, most people don't accept the biblical view of morality or marriage anymore. Masses of people today reject that idea. Listen, the number of people who do or do not believe a proposition or an idea or a truth claim says nothing about the veracity of the truth claim. I mean, there were times in history when masses of people rejected the idea that the earth revolves around the sun. But it was a fact that the earth does revolve around the sun. So the gospel is still true regardless of the numbers of voices raised in opposition. Thirdly, the gospel is still true regardless of the length of time over which unbelief has per persisted. Now, now, let me explain what I'm getting at here. When I speak at universities, periodically, people will say, but Alex, there are religions older than Christianity. Why, witchcraft predates Christianity. Let me say this. Truth doesn't have an expiration date. And in reality, the biblical worldview is the oldest of all worldviews. Uh, Judaism takes us all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Uh, when God created man, God created Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve chose to sin, and we introduced death and iniquity into the equation. And the Bible talks about something called the fall and the curse, thus the need for God's plan of redemption. And here we are, uh, living out this, um, this season of grace in which God is revealing his forgiveness to the world. But let me say this. Judaism, which is the cradle in which Christianity was birthed, uh, and I would say Christianity is really Judaism fulfilled, uh, is the oldest of all belief systems because it's God's revelation of himself to the world. Now, I tell people when they say witchcraft predates Christianity, um, yes, there was witchcraft before Jesus was born. In fact, if you want to take it all the way back, there was Satan in the Garden of Eden. So, yes, evil has been around since the time of our very first uh, ancestors. But the length of time over which unbelief has persisted says nothing about the truth or falsity of a claim. Listen, milk has an expiration date, and the, the lunch meat in your fridge might spoil after two weeks, but truth doesn't have an expiration date. If Jesus was the Savior, he still is the Savior. I often have to smile when people say, but Alex, we're in the 21st century. Let me ask you a question. Why would the flipping of a calendar suddenly negate the reality that Jesus is the Savior and rose from the grave? Listen, if Jesus was the Savior in 1900, why is he still not the Savior in 2000? The flipping of a calendar says nothing about the, the claim of a, of a belief system, that God exists, that the Bible is trustworthy, that Christ rose from the grave, all of which, by the way, we can defend by compelling lines of evidence. No, today comes, tomorrow might come by God's grace. If Christ was the Savior, he still is the Savior. A thousand millennia from now, he'll still be the Savior. The gospel is still true regardless of the, the length of time over which unbelief has persisted. Number four, the gospel is still true regardless of the sophistication with which the message has been opposed. And I will grant you, we live in an age in which the Christian message has been opposed, critiqued, unpacked, attempted 
to have been refuted by some pretty sophisticated, sophisticated types of skeptics. There are a lot of books now promoting atheism and trying to really deconstruct Christianity. Someone emailed me an article they had written critiquing the Trinity, and I wrote a response to that, and they said, what do you think? And I said, well, it's sophisticated. There are a lot of quotes, a lot of footnotes, but it's wrong. <laughs> your article, your premises are flawed, and your conclusion is false. And when we come back, we're going to talk about two other really big things that don't negate the truth of the gospel, and they're going to hit a little closer to home than some of these intellectual um, objections and responses. The gospel is still true. The prestige of the critic, the numbers of voices raised in opposition, the length of time over which unbelief has persisted, and the sophistication with which the message has been opposed. These don't refute Jesus or the gospel. We'll give you two more when we come back after this. If you value the news and commentary that you hear on Sound Reason, I have an offer I think you're going to love. World Magazine is the largest Christian news magazine in the country. Every other week, 26 times a year, World Magazine brings you news and analysis of important events that you simply can't get anywhere else. So if you're frustrated by the often anti-Christian bias of most news outlets, give World Magazine a try. To make that easy, we want to send you the next six issues absolutely free. Simply go to GetWorldNow.com and use the promo code SOUNDREASON. We'll rush you the next six issues absolutely free. No rants, no raves, just solid, thoughtful reporting and lively writing from a distinctly Christian perspective. That's what World Magazine is all about. So to get your free sample issues, just go to GetWorldNow.com. That's GetWorldNow.com. God of love, God of why love, why is there wars, and, there wars, wars and death are there in the Christians? What were quite what were for answers to all these questions and more, log on to BibleDiscoveryTV.com. There you will find original programming proving the Bible's legitimacy, exclusive documentaries on hot-button biblical issues, and much more material that can be taken anywhere with you through mobile apps. Don't put it off another day, and go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com now to take your faith to another level. Hi, Alex McFarland here. Welcome back to Sound Reason, the apologetic show where we're talking about the things that prove and affirm and corroborate the Christian faith. And I've given four things that don't negate the truth of the gospel that really talk about those outside of the faith. But let me give you two things that don't negate the truth of the gospel that hit a little closer to home. I told you about my book, 10 Answers for Skeptics. And in the, in the writing of this book, I interviewed several dozen professed atheists and skeptics. And out of, say, 34 skeptics, some of the internet infidels, a couple of them claimed to have never believed in God. They never thought there was a God. And even as a child, they questioned whether God existed. They went to college, and they studied cultural anthropology and evolution and evolutionary biology and Darwinism. And they said, that validated my unbelief. I never believed in God. And what I learned at school and the PhD taught me proved there must not be a God. But of three dozen atheists, the vast majority were ex-church members. And they would give me stories like this. They would say, well, we were in church and we were faithful Christians. And yet my mom died and we prayed and she still lost her life to cancer. And that's very sad. And our heart just uh, reaches out to people like that that are hurting. Maybe there's anger against something that life brought to them. Others would say this, Alex, the youth pastor was my hero, and we looked up to this spiritual leader, and we followed this leader, and he stole the money and ran off with the church secretary. And I came to the realization, folks, that intellectual skepticism is often preceded by emotional pain. In fact, I would say not often, always, intellectual skepticism. And if you read the great atheists of history and those that have rejected Christ, many uh, not only have hurts and pains, but many are what they would call ex-believers. So let me give you two final things that don't negate the truth of the gospel. The gospel is still true regardless 
of the failures on the part of those who claim to represent the gospel. Let me say this, friends, and, and it would be nice if this weren't true, but it is true. Christ will never let you down, but Christians might let you down. And we're not asking you to invite a Christian into your life who may let you down, but Christ that most certainly never will. Listen, it's a sad reality that those who name the name of Christ, those that profess Christianity, often do things that are very ungodly. And if you're watching today and if you've been hurt by a Christian and you trusted a believer and, and they betrayed you or let you down or maybe you were in church and it was a toxic faith experience, please don't miss the God who loves you because of the behavior of, of a Christian. Uh, I'm sorry that Christians oftentimes, they talk it but they don't walk it. They profess Jesus but they don't live it. That's bad, but... That doesn't negate the reality that Christ died on a cross for you. He loves you profoundly. He loves you so much. And Christ will never let you down, though sadly, Christians might. But the final thing I want to say is the gospel is still true. Regardless of the apathy sometimes exhibited on the part of those to whom the gospel has been entrusted. Now, Jesus Christ said in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. We've been given the charge to take the gospel to the whole wide world, to proclaim it, to live it, love it, share it, show it. And oftentimes, we've received this great mandate with a big... <laughs> we are kind of asleep at the switch. And they say here in America, where we're recording this show, that there are 70, 80, maybe even 100 million Christians. Well, if there are 100 million Christians in America, why is it that our culture looks as dark as it does. Friends, the gospel is still true regardless of the apathy sometimes exhibited on the part of those to whom the gospel's been entrusted. Let me give you a little illustration in closing. This gospel is true. It's priceless. It's precious. It matters. It's relevant to each and to every person. We told the story of the man who almost missed a great investment because what was priceless to one seemed worthless to another. A story is told of a man who was on an island, Ocracoke Island, off of my home state of North Carolina, and he found some clay balls, and he was throwing them into the ocean, and he reached in his pocket, and he found the last one, and he decided to keep it as a souvenir. Later, he read an article about how pirates would put diamonds and jewels in clay balls and hide them in the ground, and he broke open that clay ball, the last one, and inside was a diamond. And he realized that he had been throwing jewels into the ocean. And I think about how many of us, we're throwing away jewels, time, opportunity, a great message. Folks, don't squander your life, your soul, and don't squander the opportunity to tell others about the truth of Jesus. We'll talk more about this next time on Sound Reason. In the meantime, God bless you and stand for truth.